biofeedback sessions on the Myonics are accessible through the Myonics app or Biograph Infinity software. To run a biofeedback session using the Myonics app, first, load the app and log in with your unique name and password. You may then select a patient from the patient list by clicking Select Patient on the top status bar. Selecting and switching between patient can be done at any time from the status bar. You may also run a session anonymously with no patient selected. If a patient is selected, all the settings previously used with this patient will load automatically and the sessions may be saved into their patient file once completed. Enter biofeedback mode by clicking the biofeedback button in the main menu. This will load the biofeedback preview screen. In this screen, you can view the quality of the signal, adjust the view settings, set the session parameters, and begin a session. The first view is a line graph consisting of time displayed on the x-axis and, and signal's amplitude scaled on one or two y-axis. You may switch between different view types by swiping left and right anywhere on the screen. The left scale represents channel A and the right one channel B. Since this is the preview screen and timer has not been activated yet, the x-axis scale values remain hidden until a session is started. The signal for channel A appears in black and channel B in gold. To hide or show the scales and signals, you may click on the letters A or B below the y-axis scales on each side. Several other options are available to fit the view to the user's needs. By default, y-axis are auto-scaled, and both channels are linked to each other. This means the scales will be zoomed in and out automatically to show the entire range of amplitudes reached. To adjust the zoom manually, First, unselect the Auto Scale by, by clicking the Auto Scale button on the bottom left of the screen. The button will turn from gold to gray. You may now zoom in and out by pinch to zoom or drag and dropping up and down on the scales themselves. Notice the threshold lines must remain in view. You will not be able to zoom in past them. You may also scale the two channels separately. First, unselect the Link Channels button on the bottom left of the screen. You can now zoom in and out on each channel individually. Scaling the x-axis is done by touching and holding anywhere on the x-axis line for two seconds and releasing. This will bring up a slider to select the amount of time in seconds you would like to be displayed on the screen. Click OK to save and go back to preview screen. Clicking the MVC button on the bottom right part of the screen will continuously display the maximum voluntary contraction reached by the patient for each signal on the corresponding scale. Turning MVC off and then on again will remove previous achievement and start calculation again. Let's take a look at the other view types. Swipe left anywhere on the screen to switch to bar graph view, showing one or two signals with y axis only. All the same view settings are available in this screen except for x-axis scaling. Swipe left again to reach animation view, displaying bar graphs and an animation in the middle of the screen. After starting a session, this animation will play as long as patient remains in condition and pause when conditions are not met. On this screen, there are two more view settings. Swipe up and down on the animation screen itself to cycle between four types of animations. You may also play the animation on full screen by clicking the screen icon on the bottom right of the animation window. To exit from full screen, Click the screen icon again. The last type is Pattern View. This is a specific type of session in which the patient does not have a threshold goal and is instructed instead to keep the signal within the pattern line. 
Channel A is the active channel, and channel B, if connected, is displayed as a bar graph on the right and acts as a control signal, along with its separate threshold. You may ask the patient, for instance, to keep channel B signal below threshold while guiding channel A in the pattern. To select a different pattern to be used, click the Pattern button on the bottom of the screen. Zooming in and out on channel A will change the signal scale, but not the pattern as it appears on the screen. This allows the user to adjust difficulty level of the task. Notice there is no auto scaling in pattern view. Please notice, view types can be changed before and during the session. However, pattern view is a unique case. If a session is started in pattern view, you will not be able to switch to other views in session. And vice versa, you may not switch into pattern view in mid-session from other views. Pattern view may also only be used as an open session without work and rest modes and may not be auto-scaled. Before starting a biofeedback session, you may select an existing or saved protocol or adjust the session settings manually. Click the menu icon on the top left of the screen. Here you can select the type, duration, and timing of sessions, as well as decide on the threshold condition or goal of the session. Aside from the unique pattern view mode, there are three basic types of biofeedback sessions. The default work rest type, in which the patient is given set times to work and set times to rest for one or both channels. Do not confuse work phase with threshold condition or goal. Work phase can be used to practice activating or relaxing of muscles. The second type is an alternating work rest session. To activate this type, check the alternating checkbox on the top of the menu. In this type of session, work and rest times are identical and patient is instructed to alternate between work on channel A while resting on channel B and then work on channel B while resting on channel A. The third type of session is an open session. Activate this mode by clicking the open session button on the top of the menu. In an open session, there are no work and rest phases and user may instruct the patient to perform tasks as they wish. Pattern view only allows this type of session. Session duration can be entered on the top of the menu. Click and enter the amount of minutes and seconds. Clicking anywhere on the screen will close the dialog box. This will adjust automatically as time will be rounded up to fit the work and rest timings if necessary. Setting session duration to zero allows you to run an infinite session and stop it when you please. Sessions may be stopped at any time even if a session duration is set. To adjust work and rest times, if applicable, click on the value next to the corresponding line and enter the desired value. Clicking anywhere on the screen will close the dialog box. Notice once again, in the unique pattern view mode, there are no work and rest times and session is always open. Thresholds provide a goal for the patient to reach with the signal. Threshold adjustment is done on the main preview screen. Click on the threshold once. Two dots appear on the sides of the line to signify it is selected. You may now drag and drop to move the threshold to the wanted value. In most cases, this can be done while in session as well. The exception is with auto threshold or dynamic threshold turned on. Other th threshold settings are available in the menu. In the Myonix app, there are two basic types of threshold. Static, which is the classic type, and dynamic, which provides a moving target for the patient. There are two separate thresholds, one for each channel. Their settings and values can be selected separately. The threshold condition represents the desired goal for the patient to achieve. In static threshold mode, 
If threshold condition is set to above by moving the radio button of the corresponding threshold to the up pointing arrow, the patient's goal would be to contract the muscle until signal reaches above the set threshold. If the condition is set to below by moving that same button to the down pointing arrow, the patient's goal will be to relax the muscle until signal reaches below the set threshold. Auto threshold is also available in static mode. Selecting auto threshold will drive the corresponding threshold to adjust periodically during the session to accommodate the patient's abilities. For example, if the patient is not able to contract enough to reach the threshold, the threshold will move down a bit. If the threshold is reached too easily, it may move up during the session. Notice that selecting auto threshold will disable manual adjustment of the threshold by drag and dropping. Dynamic mode is a different type of threshold. This type will jump up and down randomly within a set range of amplitude every set number of seconds, asking the patient at times to reach above the threshold and at times to reach below. This provides a more complex moving target goal for control training. After selecting dynamic threshold, on the bottom of the menu, you will be able to set the range in which the threshold can move up and down and the time intervals in which this will happen during the session. While dynamic thresholds are turned on, the initial value of the threshold can be selected before starting the session. Once session starts, the threshold value will move up and down within the given range and threshold will not be available for manual adjusting. In the unique pattern view mode, threshold settings are only applicable to channel B as the pattern itself represents the threshold for channel A, with the condition being within as opposed to above or below. Finally, you can save all the settings adjusted in a protocol to be available at any time, or load a previously created protocol on the bottom of the menu. Keep in mind, even if you do not save the protocol, as long as a patient is selected, the same settings will be remembered per this patient and loaded again the next time you start a session with them. After all settings are adjusted, click the record button on the bottom of the screen to start a live session. In live view, you can see and follow the live signals. You can see the session elapsed or remaining time, click on the stopwatch or clock in the middle top of the screen to alternate between these, and current phase along with the remi remaining time left on it. While in session, you may still switch between views, adjust view settings, scaling, and threshold values and settings. In addition, you may add event markers to signify events happened during the session. Do this by clicking the Add Marker button on the bottom right of the screen. These can later be viewed or named in the review screen. Click the pause icon on the bottom of the screen to pause the session, allowing you to resume when desired. To stop the session and go to the review screen, click the stop button on the top of the screen. When a session is finished or stopped manually, the review screen will appear. If saved, this screen is also accessible from the patient file by clicking Review from the main menu and selecting the desired session. In this screen, you may view the entire session in a line graph view. The graph includes the signals A and B, A in black and B in gold, as well as the threshold values for each channel in dashed lines. If calculated, maximum voluntary contractions are displayed as dense dotted lines. Any event markers appear on the x-axis. You can click on these and name them if you wish. You can also move them around by drag and dropping and create new ones by first moving the red loca location line to the desired location and then clicking the Add Marker button. 
You may zoom in on the x-axis by touching and holding anywhere on the x-axis for two seconds and then releasing. Then, adjust the number of seconds to appear on the screen. To scroll, swipe left or right on the x-axis itself. Y-axis are auto-scaled to fit the signal value. To access the session statistics, click on the statistics icon that looks like an equation graph on the most bottom right part of the screen. Click again to hide. To save the session, click on the menu button on the top left of the screen and then select Save to Patient File. If a patient is selected, the session will be saved to their file. If no patient is selected, you will be asked to select one first. From here, you may also generate a report to be shared with the patient or referring body. Click Generate Report and then Generate Preview. The report will be displayed. Reports include the entire line graph view of the session, the current view of the graph in case you zoomed in, the patient's name, the date and time of the session, and all the session's settings and statistics. Once it is generated, you can save as a PDF file locally, print it, or share it using any application installed on the tablet.